we're going to go into Substance Designer. And I'm just going to basically open up that sample again. Uh, we'll work on a different model next week. But um, what I want to do is just basically work on one that everyone should have. And um, some of the a lot of the stuff I'm going to be doing has probably been done um, in some substance tutorials anyway. But what is kind of good because it gives you some context. So we'll start off with the interface first of all and how to um, kind of navigate around. You might have an older version um, and your interface layout might be a little bit different. If I just go to uh, view reset UI. Um, then I'm getting a uh, kind of newer layout. Um, and I'm going to keep it to this, although when I'm working on a personal level, I kind of start to drag some stuff over to make a bit more room. So um, up here we've got the toolbar for our different tools. Currently I'm in paintbrush mode. Uh, I, over here we have an eraser. You can see there's a little drop down. So if I go here, you've got paint and then physical paint and basically substance designer uses um, a particle system from um, uh, popcorn effects who are a brilliant um, real-time effects company um, and some of their stuff is implemented inside of here there's an eraser and there's a stencil uh, for painting on um, images or painting through textures and then what we've got is a great tool for selecting um, parts of your model, whether that's selecting, say, for example, the faces or the model or even UVs. And it's great for masking. It's really, really cool. Uh, we've got a color selector there for selecting materials. And then over here, we've got, if I just go back to my paintbrush so we can get rid of that wireframe, just over here, you can see that we've got the ability to mirror our painting. Um, Unfortunately, the mirroring here, well, I say unfortunately, the mirroring here is limited to just one axis. Um, it's no biggie. Uh, then we've got something which is pretty special, which is the ability to paint in 2D only, 3D only, or look at your work in 2D and 3D. Now, what's pretty special about Substance Designer, and let me just turn off the uh, mirroring, is that if I was painting on a model here, and I start painting in this area here. Well, let me just change my brush to something meaningful. I'm just going to create a new layer. Uh, if I start painting here, you can see that we start to get that set, uh, the paint starts to paint over the, um, the edge of the UV shell. So it means that I can paint here and it's seamless, which is quite extraordinary. Most packages where you're painting in 2D, um, it doesn't take into account the other portion. And here you can paint seamlessly if you want to, which is pretty cool. Also, you can rotate this view if you want. And also um, you can rotate the lighting. Uh, to control the lighting in here, if I hold down Shift, and with I'm using a Wacom pen here, so if it was a, a mouse, it'd be my right mouse button. In this case, I'm using Shift and my lower uh, button on my Wacom pen. Uh, you can see that I can rotate this environment, and you can see it's updating in 2D as well, which is really, really interesting. And we've got control over uh, the rotation of our camera, and then a really nice feature, which is called uh, Lazy Mouse, um, which allows us to kind of offset our stroke. So what I'm going to do is go back to 3D, uh, 3D only. You can see there are hotkeys there. And now we're going to look at the rest of the interface. So um, we've got the layers here. And the layers basically are for each object. And each object here has been split up in a particular way. And you can see next to here, we've got a thing called a texture list. If I hide these, you can see that we've got if I click on helmet and then re, uh, make it re, uh, visible, uh, you can see here that what we've got is the helmet model. It's been organized into, um, it's consisting of different models, but it's combined together as effectively one texture set. And um, how you break up your model is quite important because 
if I was to put the head underneath that, I am unable to paint between two models. That means, or should I say, two texture sets. So the head geometry is effectively separate from the helmet geometry. Now, if you've used um, ZBrush, you might be familiar with subtools, and this is kind of similar to that. Um, if I just make the head invisible and we go back to the helmet, the key thing here is that this is comprised of separate meshes. Uh, they're not welded together, but they are combined. Um, and Substance Painter uses a kind of really innovative masking system to enable us to select various portions of this. So what we've got here is a texture set list. We don't define that inside of Substance Painter. We define that in our uh, authoring package, which could be Max or Maya. And so when you export, you export your model out separately as FBXs. And we'll go through that next week. I don't want to talk about baking textures today or importing objects. I just want to use the kind of default stuff that we've got so we can just look at um, using um, and understanding Substance Painter. So we've got our texture set here. And underneath that, we've got the properties. So the properties um, are basically dependent on what, whatever material we've got. And this can, is, is context sensitive. So we'll look at this in a second. Underneath our layers, we've got texture set settings. And basically what this means is that we can specify what channels we're painting and the size of those channels and what additional maps we have selected. So here, Currently, I'm painting at 512, but I could change that to 1024 if I wanted to. And then we can specify what channels we're painting. So if we're using a spec gloss uh, um, uh, workflow, then we could change these to not roughness, but gloss. Um, now, if I click on this little plus sign here, you can see that there's glossiness there, for example. Uh, there's also opacity, there's specular. Uh, ambient occlusion. So we, um, or also emission as well. Where's emission? There we are, emissive. So we can define whatever channels we want um, as we're painting. The additional map section is for use with um, some of the really, really fantastic procedural tools that you can use to help you in your texturing. So um, obviously there's there's normal maps. And we can bake normal maps inside of Substance Designer. And what's really important is that the normal maps have a, a, a quite a big impact on the particle brush system. So if we are painting with particles, um, and you may well have seen this in various videos, and we'll have a look at it later. When I paint with particles, if there's a normal map, the particles will interact with the normals, which is fantastic. Various types of um, ID map. And then also ang um, ambient occlusion and, and curvature in this case. But like I say, we'll go through these properly uh, in the next session. Down here we have viewer settings. And this is basically the environment we're painting in, which is really important. Because if we want a consistent look, um, then all the artists working on the project would perhaps be using um, the right panorama. So in this case, let me just go here. You can see that I've got my environment blur set to uh, quite a high number. If I take it down to zero, you can see that we've got this environment. Now, if I want to navigate around um, this uh, space, if I hold down Alt, you can see I can click and rotate. And I, I can have a look around. But if I wanted to rotate the the environment, then holding down shift and bottom uh, ma uh, whack on pen click, you can see here that we're able to rotate this around. And we can see how light interacts on the surface. And we can see some surfaces are quite rough and some surfaces are much shinier. If I wanted to change that panorama, you can see that I can change that. And we have a very, very different look. The important thing is. Uh, and this is what really impresses me. Um, the textures work. They work in all the lighting conditions. 
Now, at the moment, my environment exposure is set to zero, and I could brighten this up. And you can see it will kind of blow out. Sometimes these sliders are a little bit uh, tricky to control, but if I click on these little kind of pencil icons here, then I can specify a value by typing it in. So you can see that we've got lots of different environments that you can have a look around and um, are pretty good for suiting most needs, but obviously you can uh, uh, get your own as well. And they have a huge impact on the kind of quality. But as you see, every time I change one of these, um, it still looks good. If I don't want to see it, then I can turn the environment opacity down completely. Or as I had earlier on, then I can just kind of blur that out. Um, and that's really up to you. Um, now, the shader I'm using just here, if I click on this, you can see it's PBR, physically based rendering, metal rough. So it's really important when I'm painting my textures, if I go back to texture set settings just down here, that I use base color, rough, and metallic. Um, otherwise, it kind of doesn't make much sense. Um, we do have other shaders that we uh, can utilize. So if I just hover my mouse over there, you can see there's PBR Metal Rough with Alpha Blending. So if I want to um, get some opacity, if I'm painting some opacity, and we can look here, you can see there's some you know, these are glasses, so we'd want opacity here, then we would use that. There's opacity with um, basically Alpha Test. Uh, you can call that on-off alpha. Either it is transparent or it's not a much cheaper version, if you like. And then you've got spec gloss. So if you did want to work with PBR spec gloss, then you can see there's a substantial change there. It doesn't really make sense because I'm using metal rough. So you can see it's a very, very different look. Um, which one you use is dependent on the pipeline you're using, and that's a really key thing here. Um, so what I'd argue is for using Metal Rough, first of all, um, because that works in Unreal Engine, and also it works in um, Unity as well. Uh, you might be using another um, engine, but um, I, for these for the purposes today, we're going to be just talking about Metal Rough. So um, we've got some shading parameters down here. I'm just going to turn this back to PBR Metal Rough. And you can see that we've got um, AO intensity, ambient occlusion intensity there, which is kind of for visual feedback. Um, height force. Now, this is for the bump maps, which we'll be painting in a minute. And then we've got lighting quality as well. So I just tend to leave that on its own. We're not dealing with emissive today. And stencil opacity, we're not using a stencil at the moment, but that's how we can control that. OK, so that's fewer settings. Um, we've talked a little bit about texture settings as well. Um, we'll use these in a minute. And so that kind of brings us over to these shelves. Now, when I work, um, I have two monitors. Currently, this is all cramped on one. And what I tend to do is drag these all over to a separate monitor um, because there's lots of little shelves on here. But we've got alphas. And if I just hold my mouse over there, it should kind of show you that alpha there. And these can be used in lots of different ways to control our brush stroke. Um, procedurals. Now, these are fantastic because basically they are part of the generator system we'll be looking at later, which enable us to create some uh, completely non-destructive, amazing effects for texturing. Uh, here are the generators here. So you've got like things like um, uh, paintware. There's loads of them. We'll go through those later on. And uh, textures. So this is where we import our textures. And there's environments here. Just moving up to here, we've got brushes. And I'm going to kind of speed through now because I'm just looking at the time. Uh, we've got lots of different brush types we're going to be using the particle brush systems, and then tools. And again, we'll talk about that um, in a couple of weeks. And then here are our materials as well. And when I click on the materials, you can see there's a huge library. Now, this is pretty awesome because it comes built with a huge amount. It comes in built with a huge amount of different materials that you can use, silk, generic, gravel. Um, we'll be looking at a few of them today. But also, if you're new to Substance Designer, this will kind of won't be a cool thing necessarily, but if you've been using it for a bit, now there's the Substance Share website, 
um, which means it everyone's kind of contributing towards a library that everyone can use um, which is absolutely fantastic right so we'll just talk very briefly about navigation and then we're ready to go we're going to start texture painting um, if you do have any questions do do chat um, do, do kind of type them in um, and we'll uh, uh, try and kind of answer them as we go so in terms of navigation um, holding down alt will rotate around if I hold down alt with my bottom mouse clicker sorry my um, bottom Wacom setting we can zoom in and out um, if you're using a mouse alt right mouse button alt left mouse button and alt middle mouse button does that so on your Wacom pen it's alt bottom clicker to zoom in and out alt and just click and drag will rotate and alt and top will pan around now wherever my mouse is effectively becomes the pivot for the rotation so um, one thing is if I want to zoom on this object or frame it if I press F you'll see that it kind of pops up there and that's because we've got a whole model loaded but it's no real big deal to just kind of zoom in and once you're, you, you've zoomed in when you start to rotate on the object as you can see there it's now rotating about that point which is really really cool now if I want to kind of control for you ZBrush users out there if I want to control the view of this holding down alt and shift will kind of snap my view just like ZBrush now unless they've hidden it somewhere in the latest version and I can't find it there's no kind of way of switching between quickly between orthographic and perspective and that would be great because I think with texture painting package uh, perspe uh, perspective and, and orthographic shift would be really really handy but as you can see here I'm just rotating I'm holding down alt and if I click on shift as I'm doing it it snaps down so we've got a great way of controlling those views it's really nice okay so we're going to start texture painting now and uh, hopefully this should provide like I say within the next hour I want to leave kind of 15 minutes at the end for some questions but like I say if you do um, have a question uh, then do write it 